Hey guys, it's Daniel, licensed therapist. Leonardo DiCaprio is arguably the most desirable man on the planet. And if this doesn't convince you, then I don't know what will. And as you would expect, someone like Leonardo DiCaprio would be dating the most beautiful woman on the world, which he does. But there's been an interesting pattern that has emerged. Let's watch this clip and learn a little bit about it. Here we take a look at Leo's dating history and the women in his infamous 25 Club. Victoria's Secret model Giselle started dating Leo when she was a teenager and they became one of Hollywood's hottest couples. They attended the Oscars together and were spotted kissing at basketball games. But after a five year romance, they split when Giselle was 23. She revealed at the time, quote, we were just not meant to be boyfriend and girlfriend, but I respect him enormously and I wish him nothing but the best. Leo clearly has a type and his next romance was with Sports Illustrated model Bar Raffaelli. The pair, who had an 11-year age gap, dated on and off for six years and there were even engagement rumors. But they reportedly grew apart before breaking up for good in 2011 when Bar was... 25. Gossip Girl actress Blake Lively was the next blonde bombshell to steal Leo's heart. They met during the Cannes Film Festival and enjoyed romantic dates in Venice, Los Angeles, and New York. The couple, who had a 12-year age gap, dated for a year before Leo's work commitments led to their split. Blake was 23 at the time, and they remained good friends. Giselle wasn't the only Victoria's Secret model Leo wooed. He also dated Erin Heatherton when she was 22. But the romance only lasted 10 months due to their crazy schedules, with a source saying, there was no bad blood and it was just time to move on. And just when you thought Leo had run out of Victoria's Secret models to date, along came Tony Garn. She started dating Leo when she was 20 and he was 38. But Tony was notably absent from Leo's 40th birthday bash. And she reportedly broke it off after Leo was spotted leaving a Miami nightclub with 20 women. Next up was Kelly Rohrbach who is best known for playing CJ in the 2017 Baywatch film. She dated the Wolf of Wall Street star for a few months when she was 25 and he was 40 before they blamed their split on intense work schedules. Danish swimsuit model Nina Agdell and Leo mostly kept their relationship out of the spotlight before they split when she was 25. And up until a few weeks ago, Leo had been in a long-term relationship with actress and model Camilla Marone, and it appeared he had found the one despite the 22-year age gap. A source even claimed that Leo had never loved a girl like this and was even considering having children with her. But this week it emerged the pair had split after five years together and in what may be an eerie coincidence just weeks after her 25th birthday in June. So yeah, the whole 25 year rule for Leonardo DiCaprio. What's that all about? Well, I've been able to come up with four explanations. You can be the judge of what you think is true. All of this is just speculation and guesswork because we don't know. Only really Leo knows, but hey, your guy is here to give you a little therapist insight and see if we can't explain what's going on with Leo. So the first of the four explanations is nothing's wrong. Because I know a lot of you guys look at what Leonardo is doing and you guys are saying, that's great. If I was him, I'd do the exact same thing. Sign me up for that. And I would have to say that it's somewhat legitimate. Hey. He has unlimited resources, unlimited fame, unlimited wealth, and unlimited options. And so, so maybe this is just what someone does when they have all of those options. I will say this though. The point of a relationship is to build closeness, intimacy, partnership with someone. It's for you to build something that grows over time. And after a long time, you have something that is amazing and that benefits you. And what Leonardo DiCaprio is doing is terminating these relationships. So when I look at this pattern, what I see as a therapist is a bunch of failed relationships. So as a therapist, I look at this pattern and say, there's some not good aspects to it, but I do believe that him being who he is and doing what he does, it just could be the manifestation of his situation. So that's explanation number one. Let's get into explanation number two. Amid the Twitter storm triggered by Leo's breakup with Camila Monroe, one insider from Leo's inner circle decided to break silence on all these speculations and talk to the Post about the alleged reason Leo only dates women under 25. The source claimed that Leo simply doesn't want to settle down while all the girls over 25 want to get married and have kids. By the time girls reach 25, they're looking for more. They're looking to get married and settle down. That is not what Leo wants. 
the insider said. He does not want a family and does not want to be around women who may press him for that. The source continued, the minute a girl meets him, the clock is ticking. If she gets too old, in a couple of years, she is gone. If she gets too close, in a couple of years, she is gone. He's gotten older, but his taste has not gotten any older. So he's just an older guy that doesn't want to commit. So he's dating these younger women. I don't think anybody really buys this. I will admit it could possibly be true, but it seems to be a PR stunt. So although it's possible, there's plenty of people over 25 that don't want to commit. I can understand the logic. For me, psychologically, it doesn't exactly line up. It's not exactly the best explanation for what we're seeing in Leonardo because it is a very strange, very rare behavior, but it's a possibility. So we'll leave it at that. Let's move on to the next one. There are also a lot of fans who are speculating that Leo's never actually been into women and that he hires models and makes them sign NDAs to maintain his leading man image. This type of speculation isn't exactly new, and for years now, rumors have been circulating that Leo's in a committed relationship with actor and musician Lucas Haas. Leo is gay. It's an open secret in the industry, one fan said. He outed himself two years before Titanic's release, during a movie's press junket. His talent agency freaked out, and that's when he started to hire models as beers. He'll never come out and doesn't want a lavender marriage. And another person wrote, I actually read that the reason why he can't come out is because openly gay actors get cast only in gay roles, and that would hurt his reputation as a heartthrob and would limit his character range. So Leo is gay. Who saw that coming? Apparently a lot of people did see that, but this is the first time I've ever heard that, so it's pretty shocking to me. So I guess the thinking is, it's all a cover-up. He's dating these young, beautiful women because he can engage in a relationship and it looks like he's not gay. So he's hiding his secret from everybody, but also looking like a stud. However, looking kind of weird because attention has been brought to his personal life because of this pattern. If I were to put myself in his shoes, I would just find one person and I would make a deal with that person and say, hey, you're gonna be my pretend partner and we're gonna live this life and I'm gonna be secretly gay. Instead of going through this hoopla of finding these new girlfriends when he turned 25. So the 25 cutoff age, I feel like is somewhat arbitrary when we're talking about him being gay and trying to hide that fact. But once again, it's within the realm of possibilities. Maybe Leo is gay. It's not that exactly aha moment for me though. It doesn't make me say, oh, I get it. That explains what's going on. But let's move on to the fourth and final explanation and see if that doesn't give us that aha moment. But there's also one very disturbing theory about Leo's dating habits. See, over the past few years, there's been a lot of public interest in exposing the dark side of Hollywood, particularly the child star industry. And a number of former child stars, such as Corey Feldman and Jeanette McCurdy, have started speaking out against Hollywood creeps. As for Leo, he started acting when he was just five years old, and since he grew up poor and lived in a rough neighborhood, he was motivated to succeed by any means necessary. However, many fans have speculated that Leo's situation also made him vulnerable to the industry creeps. There's one name in particular that gets brought up in connection to Leo's career beginnings, and that's Brian Peck. Peck used to work as a producer on Nickelodeon alongside his close buddy, Dan Schneider, and in 2004, Peck served a prison sentence after being convicted of a lewd act against a child. The court documents obtained by Daily Mail Online show that the offenses happened at Peck's home where he was coaching his victim, a young actor whose parents reported Peck to the police. Peck was originally charged with 11 charges, but he spent just 16 months in prison. As for Peck's victim, he's only named as John Doe in the court documents to protect his identity. However, there have been some speculation online that John Doe could be Leo, since Leo worked with Peck on the 80s sitcom Growing Pains. Take a look at this weird interaction between young Leo and Peck on set. Brian is the famous artist, and we always make fun of each other and portray each other in silly, satirical ways. Leo's job on this set, for some reason, is to make fun of me all day long. And this is why some fans are now speculating that something traumatic happened to Leo when he was a young actor and left him with serious emotional issues. So this, for me, sort of is that aha moment. This makes a lot of sense to me. 
and everything seems to line up for me as a therapist from what I know about people. I gotta say, watching him as a kid interact with this guy, for me, it's just really creepy. I don't like it. I get a very weird feeling. I don't know. Everything is speculation at this point. I have no idea what happened or if that guy did anything to Leonardo, but something just doesn't seem right there when I watch that video. And when it comes to explaining his behavior, his dating life, this does match up. So when people are intimate with each other, especially sexually, they need to feel safe with the other person because they're so vulnerable. They're literally naked and emotionally naked as well. And so in order to get naked with someone, you need to feel safe with that person. You need to make sure that person is going to not hurt you. And then there are those people that cause you pain and people who cause you pain, you don't feel safe with them and you put up boundaries and you push them away so that they don't hurt you again. You don't have to experience that pain over and over and over. It's a protection mechanism. The thing is when you cross those two things, sex and pain, weird stuff starts to happen in your brain. And so this could definitely be an explanation for what Leonardo is doing. He has a difficulty with intimacy. He has a difficulty with closeness. When people get close, he starts to feel the danger and he starts to get scared. And therefore, maybe he just sabotages or there's some kind of predestined end to each of his relationships. And that can definitely happen with those kinds of experiences that Leonardo may have had according to this video and according to this explanation. So what's the answer? The thing is, I don't know. It's all conjecture. There's not a lot of Leonardo DiCaprio's walking around with his experience. So it's not like we're able to really study or understand him. It's just a single person. And we would really need to just sit down and talk to him to really find out. And we really need to know his history to really find out because he's a very unique person with a very unique psyche. And so these very unique behaviors could just be the result of his very unique circumstances. But if I were a betting man, and if I had a gun pointed to my head, what would I say is the explanation? I would say it is explanation number four. And if that's the case, I feel really bad for Leonardo. I hope he's able to overcome that. If it's number one, then God bless you, Leonardo. Go knock yourself out. Anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.